Hello YouTube gardeners. Well, the growing season is well on its way. And at this point, it's all about taking care of the plants, making sure they stay healthy and productive, addressing any pest issues. And we have a big one. Unfortunately, we have gopher activity again. We haven't had this problem in quite a while. Those are definitely gopher mounds. Several years ago, we had a gopher taking out our pumpkins and we'd be very, very disappointed if he started going after our beautiful bulbing onions. So we'd love to hear if any of you guys have experienced gopher problems and how you've been successful in battling them. We're familiar with trapping but we'd love to hear if there are any deterrents that you've been successful with. And also, if you would share with us what vegetables they go after. These beautiful beef steaks are so productive this year. We'd hate for these plants to get taken out by a gopher. And we greatly appreciate any of your recommendations. It's better to hear it from people with experience all right, so first I'll go over how we're caring for our tomato plants and then I'll go over how we're caring for our pepper plants to make sure that we're getting productive, healthy plants and lots and lots of fruits to harvest. Got my little guy by my side. Hey buddy, you getting some sun? All right, so here is a young husky. So first I'm gonna remove all the bottom leaves as a preventative step in fighting any bacterial or fungal problems. And then I'm gonna get this guy covered with the shade cloth. Growing food in the desert, shade cloths are definitely necessary, especially for tomatoes, because as I mentioned in our video, protecting our food from the intense heat, tomato plants really do love heat, but at a certain point, it's just too hot. And we're gonna be at, I think, 97 today. And we have fruit setting in, these beautiful blossoms. And they will not like those temps. The flowers will probably just dry off and drop. So we'll get them covered with the shade cloth. Just gonna staple gun it to this privacy fence. And then fasten it with these irrigation stakes. We remove all of the lower stems all of the lower leaf action. And then depending on where we're growing, we may come in and remove suckers, usually when we're trellising up a pole. But if we're growing in a raised bed and letting it cascade out of the raised bed, then we just let the plant go wild and don't remove any suckers. So it really depends on what we're trying to achieve. Trellising, we do like to remove most of the suckers so that the plant doesn't go crazy and is easier to maintain and has better airflow. Since trellising, we're growing lots of plants together. It's better to have less leaves so that the plant can have lots of air circulation. All right, that's good for now. Now time to get them covered. And here we are, all nice and protected. Just stapled it to the fence. Got it secured down because we get breezy here. And I'll often use one of these stakes to prop up under the shade cloth so that the shade cloth isn't resting on the plant. I wish I would have took a clip of how poor this Black Russian and Black Beauty were doing before I got them covered with the shade cloth. They were very stressed out. It was very obvious. Got the shade cloth up and they're just so healthy and comfortable and beautiful. On high heat days like today, 97, 98, I also like to give them an extra drink of water in the morning to keep them nice and comfortable. So I came in this morning, gave them a deep water and they're all ready to go. And of course, we're keeping an eye out for pests like the tomato hornworm or spider mites. And we're also removing any discolored leaves 
in case there is a bacterial problem starting. The easiest way to locate a tomato hornworm is you'll usually see little black specks on the leaves and that is their waste from eating the leaves. But here you could see that something's been munching on the leaves, on the undersides of the leaves. See here also, this is definitely pest damage. And if we flip it over, there he is. It's very hard to see because he's so tiny. I don't know if this guy is a tomato hornworm, but I'm betting he is. Let me see if I can get a better shot. It's a very, very young, yeah, that looks like a young tomato hornworm. So I'll just dispose of the leaf. If he was bigger, I'd feed it to the chicks, but they're not gonna get much of a snack out of this one. We're also making sure that our tomatoes get lots of nutrients. Here's a batch of compost tea brewing. We like to use Boogie Brew and also Dr. Earth. And a handy tip, tomato plants love an Epsom water. It gives them a drink of minerals to promote larger fruit. I came across this great resource that talks about the benefits of feeding your tomato and pepper plants with Epsom salt. Check it out, it's harvest to table. And you can see here, Epsom salt used as a foliar spray or soil additive will help tomato and pepper plants grow and produce larger, tastier yields. Great resource. We've been doing it for years and we get outstanding results. Such delicious tomatoes. All right, that's it for now. I was going to go into how we care for our pepper plants in this video, but we're trying to keep these videos shorter. So we will be sharing how we care for our pepper plants plus handy tips soon. So hit the subscribe button. And with all this talk about Epsom salt, I'm going to be adding some to my bath tonight to help out my sore muscles. All right, I hope you guys enjoy your week and enjoy your garden.